okay so this is going to be the second part of the Igarashi Koi farm um, Igarashi, Igarashi, whichever way people say it so this is here um, now down there that used to be the Koi house down there they used that's where the family home used to be beautiful house um, but that, like I said on the first video that they moved down to the um, the, the flatlands um, so down behind me they have a big koi house there which has got big fish in and again as a kari koi um, now this is a, a very very famous house um, back in you know 20 years ago when we used to bring you know you used to be bringing out 40 customers they, this was their main go-to place I mean people could spend hours and hours just gazing at the koi in this room um, you used to see them lying down on the floor just trying to get as many fish but the, every fish was a fantastic koi um, they really were they've won a lot of shows all the way around the world he was re regarded as one of the main gosanki breeders in the world not just um in you know he, not just for for this country i mean he, i'll go in there i still got the trophies on the walls um, but like I said, his son just wanted to go a different direction, which is great. And he's done, and you know, he's made a good decision because he's supplying koi now that nobody else breeds. So, supply and demand, isn't it? So they're doing well. Uh, maybe the go Sankia too. Maybe it's too, it's not not as a difficult thing, but it's a lot more complicated than what he's doing now. So, I don't know. And he's a small company, so he's only there's him, his son. So, but anyway, let's go and take a look inside. I don't know what's in here, guys. I've not been in this the first time. Might even be locked for all I know but it's not so here tiny little place but I mean if anybody's ever been to Kazato before especially in the other days then comment on this video and let me know what you think of it because I know people bought some amazing koi from this place right now it looks to me as if these are parent koi that's what it looks to me um, but on that ledge there we used to have about eight people sat there. We used to have people lying down on the floor over there, just gazing into this pond, man. It was amazing. Every single pond had amazing fish in it. So in here, they had the big monster fish up to sort of like 85, something like that. In here, they had the sand side, which were all show winners. Every single one of them, I can't. Honestly, I'm not even exaggerating a little bit that the fish that used to come out of these ponds. And here, which is this tiny little pond, was where the Nisai were, where the special Nisai were, and these are definitely parent koi. So I wouldn't, it looks like now that he's using this for the parent koi, which again, pulls at my heartstrings a little bit because I remember what this place used to be. Um, so look at all the trophies there. He won a lot of the, the, like up in Niigata and stuff like that, he won all the shows up here, no Yosai, uh, places like that. I mean, this shower, which, which is there was a very famous show and it still is it still is to this day absolutely one of the best showers ever produced i would imagine and it's got a lot of trophies up here i've seen that at the old japan show last time i was there so i'm not sure where it is now but um, i'm sure it's gone to its new home yeah these are definitely parents So you've got the Wakagoi champion over there. That was the Young Koi show that they won. Major show, major awards. They're not just like some, some um, small time show. That's probably the second biggest show in the, in the world. But that's for Young Koi. So, yeah, we had some great times in here. And Kazuto himself was a great mentor to me. Um, even when times were hard, which we've gone through a lot of them years, he always fully supported me. Oh, Tim, take these, take them, no problem. Pay me whenever. He was a great guy. He was an absolutely great guy. And his wife. So over there, they have some ponds there and then they put some Nisai in there in October, November. So dealers again, like up at Yagenji, we can just come there, buy some fish out of there, put them in nets and go away. So let's go and have a look down at the other house again. It's the first time this trip for me. So I'm taking you with me, but I'm not sure whether... Um, oh, this will be slippy. Wee. I'm not sure whether it'll be open, I'm not sure. Oh, we will see.
Oh, it is open. So these will be the fish that he's growing on. Some nice ghost sanky, some weird and wonderful stuff. Coming out with all these new names for them. I thought those days were gone. They're not parent koi, so I'm not sure they must be sold fish. Same again. It's funny, really, because when you walk around and you know the parent fish because they're the worst fish in here. The ones that look, <laughs> that look horrible. So in here, we also... He also has some lovely fish in here, or he's, he has had in the past. We bought some amazing fish from this place again oh yeah they're parents Kagi Otsuri there put the come on with you guys I'm that one I'm that one big Deutsch Karashi the he Otsuri that, that is a parent that I've known that for a long time She's just hit, hit in a meter. All in great condition. All look happy, healthy. Yeah, really cool. And like I said, people are desperate to buy these fish off him. You know, Kahaku, Sanki Showa. You can buy them from a lot of breeders in Niigata. But fish like this, like a metallic Achiba. Look at the Ginrin with big scaled Chagoy. Ginrin, like big scaled Matsukawabaki. Harawaki's Tansho. I mean, there's a Ginrin Tansho Achiba there. I asked him to try and buy that the other day, but he wouldn't let me pay. But he does love these big scales, you know, like the mirror carp in the lake. He really likes that sort of stuff. And that's what he's injecting into the koi lines now. I know in um, Asia it's massive. They're desperate for those koi. I don't think it's caught on as much in England and Europe, so. So that's Kazato, guys. You go, oh, it, it, it's funny, really, because you get, not emotional as such, but this, this farm has played a massive part in my koi, koi career. It, it has played a massive part. And that's why I came out for his funeral when he, when he got, because the, the respect I had for him were, was incredible. Um, you know, he wouldn't, he, he would do anything to help me out. Um, you know, and he knew, he knew at the time when, when things were not great, you know, I'm going back probably 15 years ago. He knew that things weren't great, but he never, he never sort of like said, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that or I'm not going to sell you any fish. It was sort of like, what do you need, Tim? Just tell me what you need. And he, and he was like that for everything. I mean, all my pricing was brilliant. Um, you know, you, you, he, he just understood. He understood. And I'm sure a lot, of the, a lot of it, I'll be honest with you, was to do because of the relationship that he had with my father. That, you know, he was probably one of the first people to buy koi from here. He was going back to the 80s, early 80s. Um, so, you know, he was probably one of the first Westerners ever to buy koi from Kazato. And in them times, in them 80s and 90s, he probably did put him on the map in the world because we were, still, we were shipping fish out of here to the States, to all over the world for, you know, huge money fish, you know, not cheap fish. And, you know, so, you know, I think that's had something to do with it. But he was always, he's always very fair to me, always. And he helped me out no end. Um, even, to the, even to the start of Quality Nishioi when we started that up. You know, I was coming out here 
I mean, you know, I, I came out here the first year we opened Quality Nishigoi, and I think I had about, what, a thousand pound in my pocket. And that was the first trip that we did. We'd had nothing. Um, and breeders like Kazuto, Shintro, Matsunoski, Marado, places like that were just like saying, Tim, just take what you want, mate. Whatever you need, whatever you need, just do it. We'll sort it out another time. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, you know, and, and back then, it, it, that's when it did get emotional back then. So, but now, he, you know, sometimes he sometimes feel a bit sad because he's not here to enjoy the more successful times. So, you know, it would have been lovely to see and it really would. I do miss him a lot. So, but anyway, back to the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you on the next one.